I've been a reluctant Mac user for the last six years or so. Reluctant not because Macs aren't good, and in fact, if anything, quite the opposite. They've been so good, especially with their M series chips, and especially for what I do on my laptop, which is web browsing and productivity on the go, that I couldn't even remotely justify using anything else. Nothing even came close to the combination of long-lasting battery life, responsiveness, and the lack of fan noise. But that has finally changed. I've spent the last month or so testing three new laptops with the three best chips from Qualcomm, AMD, and Intel to see if I could switch, and I'm happy to say that the answer is finally a very clear yes. This video is sponsored by Bellroy, and the review units were loaned to me by Asus and Lenovo with no financial compensation. So I got the ThinkPad T14S Gen 6 with a Snapdragon X Elite chip, I got an Asus ZenBook S14 with Intel's new Lunar Lake chip, and I also got a ZenBook S16 with AMD's Strixpoint chip, and with all three I got fairly high-end models. While these do vary slightly in form factors, which makes a complete apples to apples comparison a little bit difficult, they do represent the premium thin and light form factor of each chipmaker's flagship models quite well. I needed to buy a new laptop anyway because the idiot that I am bought an M1 MacBook Air with only 256 gigs of storage back when I bought it like four years ago. I've been struggling ever since because I work with video files and it's constantly full, and I wanted to see if the replacement could be something other than a new MacBook Air. I specifically wanted the laptop that was in this thin and light category, which means I needed a chip that was efficient enough to give me comfortable all-day battery life while producing minimal heat and fan noise. I have a big Windows desktop at home, which is where I do most of my heavy-duty gaming and video rendering, so in a laptop, I don't need a massive amount of raw performance, but I do want everything to feel effortlessly responsive, and a bit of gaming and editing on the go is of course a nice bonus too. Of course, a new MacBook Air would be a pretty obvious solution to my problem, but I actually preferred Windows for four reasons. First, just having Windows on both my desktop and my laptops makes everything easier. Second, I use a Samsung phone and the syncing and kind of the ecosystem magic just works so much better with Windows, because phone link combined with Samsung is awesome. Third, storage, my arch nemesis, is limited on the MacBook Airs to 512 gigabytes and is also ridiculously expensive, while all of these machines have a terabyte for much less, which I really like for video projects. And fourth, I simply grew up with Windows, and even after many years on a Mac, I personally still feel more comfortable with how it handles window management and many other little things. Okay, so these were my requirements, and I'm happy to say that all three machines that I've tested kind of met them, just with different trade-offs. For me, the Intel-based ZenBook S14 ended up being the winner, but I can easily make the case for the other two as well. The big news is that this year, after almost four years of Apple kicking everyone's butts with their brutal efficiency of the M-series chips, Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm have all finally made chips that are, well, I guess just not too far off. Macs are probably still a little bit more efficient overall, which is why only the MacBook Air can be fully fanless, unlike these other models. Plus, of course, a random Russian dude literally just leaked the M4 MacBook Pros that will launch soon too, and those promise to outperform these computers too. But I think all three Windows chipmakers have finally gotten to the point where they totally work for what I want. Okay, let's start with heat and fan noise. All three models have fans, and if you do something more intense like gaming or even just downloading and installing a very large program, you will get some heat and some fan noise on all three. But when sticking to productivity apps or even casual image editing, the fans are basically inaudible, and all three laptops stay completely cool to the touch. Intel very proudly described how they made their four efficiency-focused e-cores strong enough where they can now run a lot of workloads like a whole team's call completely on these without ever having to wake up a power-hungry p-core, and it totally shows. In a way, I'm an e-core kind of user, so for me, this is great. Basically, all of my regular tasks day-to-day -day stay in this cool state, and I don't know what Snapdragon is doing, but their thermals are comparably cool in my use too. Now, the AMD-powered ZenBook is still good, but a little bit less reliable for me in this regard. It's quiet most of the time, but video calls, for example, reliably trigger the fans and generate heat, and so does having a few too many tabs in my browser. And beside that, the only slightly annoying thing that I have found is how both ZenBooks, and especially the AMD one, become warm and audible if you charge them using chargers other than the ones they came with, and especially with low-power ones. Kinda strange. Overall, I'd say the Intel and the Snapdragon machines, to me, were super quiet and super cool, while the AMD one was not bad. Okay, so how does this efficiency translate to battery life? I got 5-9 to nine hours on the AMD ZenBook, while the Intel ZenBook and the ThinkPad both gave me roughly 8-13 to 13 hours. 
This is with my day-to-day -day productivity use, with something like 20 tabs open in Firefox at most times, including a lot of YouTube streaming, OneDrive and phone links syncing in the background, something like 6 to 10 of these apps being on at any given time, and the screens being around a comfortable 60% brightness with dark mode enabled. Now, the context for this battery comparison is that the two ZenBooks both have beautiful 120Hz high-resolution OLED displays, which are very power-hungry, while the ThinkPad has a pretty low-end 1080p 60Hz LCD that needs much less power. Also, the AMD model has a larger 16-inch screen, and the battery sizes are different too, with the ThinkPad in particular having the smallest battery of the bunch. So definitely not a completely fair comparison, but here's how I think about battery life. The AMD model is just on the edge of being able to do what I want, which is to comfortably last me through a whole day. I could choose an AMD laptop with a less power-hungry screen, which might make this viable for me, but it's a little too tight for my liking, especially if I want to use it for many years and accept battery degradation over time. The Snapdragon and the Intel models, meanwhile, both have enough battery where I feel like they don't really have any compromises. I don't have to baby them, I don't have to manage the screen brightness, I can afford to have eye candies like a gorgeous 120Hz screen, and I can still expect great battery life even after many years. A Mac might still be a little bit more efficient, but I think we're talking about the diminishing returns, and the exciting news is that we've arrived at the point where I can both have my battery life cake and also eat it by using a high refresh rate OLED screen, for example. Really nice. And as for the last piece of the efficiency puzzle, I also found that all three laptops lose around 3-4% overnight while sleeping, which is also not bad. I've noticed that Asus very aggressively tries to hibernate their machines, which I recommend turning off, especially because if you let the laptops sleep at all, all three models will enable their presence detection. This allows you to just walk up to your machine, which auto-detects you coming, it wakes up, it authenticates you with Windows Hello, and it automatically logs you in, all touchless and within a second or two. Intel, for example, explained that they do their presence sensing with Wi-Fi, where one antenna broadcasts a signal and the other one listens for that signal to bounce back off of objects, like you. Kinda creepy, but also kinda cool, and it works super well. Okay, on to performance, and first, subjectively, for my kind of use, all three of these machines felt excellent. I'm not a professional laptop reviewer, so I don't have like a million different performance benchmarks to throw at you, but I did run a few of the benchmarks myself, and I could see some pretty clear trends. In single core performance, Intel is clearly ahead in Cinebench and gets beaten only very slightly by AMD in Geekbench. This is a huge improvement over any recent Intel laptop chip. Meanwhile, in multi-core performance, AMD clearly wins with Cinebench, while Qualcomm clearly wins with Geekbench. Here, Intel is noticeably behind, which is easily explained by it being fed less power and having fewer cores. And just to round things up, in the GPU department, Intel and AMD trade blows and both are extremely competent for this form factor, while Qualcomm clearly falls behind. If you need more benchmarks, I recommend watching other reviews, but in short, if you want loads of peak multi-core performance for apps like video editing or 3D work, AMD is probably best. Qualcomm is very close, but ironically, some of those high-performance apps aren't super well optimized for ARM for now, so it's a bit of a tough choice. If you want to game casually, AMD and Intel both seem to be pretty excellent choices. Games like Baldur's Gate and Cyberpunk were actually playable in 1080p low and medium settings, and having that be the case on devices this thin is actually amazing. Meanwhile, for productivity use, where single core is king, Intel probably has a very slight edge. That said, I couldn't actually tell the difference in my normal use because all three machines just fly through all of my tasks without any stuttering, without any slowdowns, and they do so whether they are plugged in or not, which at the end of the day is all I care about anyway. Okay, I mostly wanted this video to be about the chips, not the specific laptops, because I think the big story is that the three chips have finally gotten good enough, and also because I'm not a laptop reviewer, I haven't tested all the laptops that are out there, so I can't say if these are the best ones, but either way, I wanted to round up this review with a couple more thoughts about the laptops. I love the ThinkPad aesthetic, I think the keyboard is great, and the build quality and durability is very nice too. That said, I very much recommend not getting the 60Hz 1080p LCD screen that Lenovo sent me, because it looks ancient, and the speakers are extremely basic too, like they are on basically all the business laptops. This looks especially weak next to the Asus machines, which have excellent displays and also some of the best speakers in the industry. I found the keyboards very nice and the build quality is excellent too, with no flexing or bending, and this so-called ser-aluminum finish on the top is super nice too. Really, the only nitpicking that I have is that the trackpads, while not terrible, aren't great either. They are clicky instead of haptic and they definitely feel less precise than on a Mac or a Surface, for example. 
Okay, conclusion time. After about a month of testing, I found that none of these three laptops are necessarily better than a MacBook Air. The M3 models still have slightly higher single core CPU performance than all three of the computers here, and in multi core and GPU performance, they're pretty close to the top two. We also know that the M4 MacBook Pros are coming soon too, which would take things even further. And the MacBook Air does all of this while having no fans and without you having to toggle performance mode on for benchmarks. The beautiful OLED screens, the extra storage, the additional ports and more are totally things that I've grown to love though. And for me, the gap in efficiency has narrowed just enough where I can choose the system that I prefer without feeling too silly about the trade-offs. Okay, for carrying up to four laptops around with me for the last few weeks, I've been using this fantastic new backpack from Barroy, which can comfortably fit all four devices in its laptop holder. Meanwhile, it's also the perfect backpack to keep anything dry in the rainy season here in Berlin. This model is called the Transit Backpack Plus, and it's one of their biggest backpacks that perfectly complements my other smaller Balroy backpack. Plus, it's also a great companion to the extremely cute Venture Hip pack that I recently got in the same fit and finish too. Both are obviously properly water resistant, including the very neat looking coated zippers, and they also use this awesome 100% recycled nylon fabric for the body that's very durable too. On the backpack you get many clever touches like this great magnetic quick release clip, and also super comfortable straps with nice back support that ensure stability and airflow. As a glasses person, I love the soft lined pocket for glasses and sunglasses. You get really nice quick access side pockets that are accessible on both sides while still appearing hidden. There's a little pocket that was designed to hide a sneaky air tag in, and I could go on, but I think you get the point. It's super cleverly designed like all the barrel products that I've tried. And the same goes for my little sling with its many clever little pockets too. All Barroy products look and feel extremely premium, they're made from sustainable materials, and all of mine have also held up extremely well over time, so I'm very happy to recommend them. And this goes doubly since Barroy is also a certified B Corp, meaning they work hard to be sustainable. Using my link in the description, you can get 10% off their products, so be sure to use that link. Happy browsing, and I hope you find something good, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!